Good morning, everyone. After some amazing sessions from last two days, we are here on the third and the last day of Fiki Frames. And we have some lovely speakers today for the first session, which is celebrating diversity in Indian cinema. I am going to call upon Mr. Vikram Sahai, Joint Secretary, Minister of Information and Broadcasting, on stage, please. Please, Zordar Taliyan Thoda Sa. Ms. Ratna Pathak Shah. I don't have to introduce her. I'm sure everyone knows who she is. Is ma'am here? Achha, she's, she's joining us. Ms. Renuka Shahane. Again, she doesn't need any introduction. Ms. Mansi Parekh Gohil. Very popular actress and an influencer. Mr. Rajat Agarwal. Director, Ultra Media and Entertainment Group. Mr. Mautik Tolia, founder of Bodhi Tree Multimedia. And Mr. Yuvraj Padole, Deputy Director, Films and even Madhya Pradesh Tourism Board. Ratna Ma'am has joined us. I would now call upon our moderator, Ms. Lata Srinivasan, who is a very senior journalist and a film critic. Swapnil Joshi, very Swapnil, ah, he's here. We all know him, very popular actress, actor, sorry, sorry, <laughs> very popular actor. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I think this is going to be an exciting session. Uh, thanks to, I would like to thank all the panelists before we start this session. Um, as we know, uh, Hema introduced the session as talking about, you know, regional industries and how today it's become the Indian film industry. We're trying to break down these barriers. And um, I would like to start off with uh, Ms. Ratna ji, about, you know, she's done her first Gujarati film, Kach Express, with Mansi. Um, and I think that's amazing. The movie apparently is really good from what I hear. Ma'am, uh, in your opinion, do you think there has been a big change in the inter entertainment industry, especially post-COVID? Hello. Uh, and I think the fact that we are today a panel of people from different languages, um, people who are making movies in different languages and other content, of course. The fact that there is such a panel that exists today is a sign of that change. Once upon a time when we said movies, we spoke about Bollywood. We did not even realize that that is, a, that is meant to be a, sorry, a sort of insulting term. Bollywood is not a compliment of any kind, but we have accepted it, we've taken it to heart, and we, have, we are very proud of it. Fortunately, um, things have been changing. One of the big changes, of course, is that there are many more educated Indians today than there ever were before. And they are watching all kinds of content. Uh, thanks to the pandemic and the fact that we were all locked up at home, we've all discovered that other programs in languages others, other than what we were used to have been extremely interesting, sometimes much better than the languages we've been used to. And uh, I'm hoping, and I can see that there is that change, that there are people in the general audience who are willing to see um, films made in other languages. The fact that you know a, about a Gujarati film with me and Mansi in it, uh, is, a, is a big change. Once upon a time, a film made in Gujarat never made it to anyone's notice anywhere in the country. So there is a much change happening, and I'm very proud to be part of the situation when there is this change happening. The other reason, of course, is that filmmakers today are infinitely more equipped than they used to be. 
we've been learning. We learn on the job. We've had no training institutions in this country, or practically none, except for a couple run by uh, the government for a while, and many others run by private uh, chaps who really can't qualify. So we don't have any notion of training people for making movies. We have been very, very poor academically in this area. But thanks to the internet, now people learn on their own. They watch what's happening world over, and they are learning every day. Kids, young kids, 17, 18, 16, pick up a camera and manage to make something. So there is that enormous change of the accessibility to resources, the cheap resources that we need today to produce any kind of content. TikTok takes no money at all. So all these things have fed into the idea that different kinds of content is acceptable to different audiences. Our mistake still, of course, is that we keep imagining that every shape thing should be acceptable to everyone. Pan-Indian, that's our big um, attempt. Pan-Indian. Everything cannot be pan-Indian. I mean, you can have an idli dosa in Kashmir. That doesn't make it a Kashmiri dish. It's just something you enjoy, a different taste, right? Similarly in movies, films in different languages are a different flavor. Something that's talking to you about life in a place that you know nothing about. When I watch a film from Manipur, I get blown away because I'm seeing stuff that I didn't know about. The way in which people live there, the way in which they think, the way in which society is changing. Films reflect all that. So therefore, we have a, a, a fairly important role to play. And this change is wonderful, and hopefully it shall continue. Um, unfortunately, it has been very uneven. Gujarat in particular, since I'm speaking on the, that front, Gujarat in particular has had a very uneven rough ride. Some of them have been good and acceptable to all, but some of them have been poor quality. We are going to have to bump up quality in all cinema, regional, Hindi, everything. And we are going to have to try harder to get across to a new audience. So those are the big challenges that I see ahead of us. But that films in different languages will survive, I think I'm very hopeful about that. Um, Mansi, I'd like to bring you in here because, you know, uh, you also work in Gujarati films and, um, and we had an interesting quick chat, you know, before uh, we got on stage. So do you think there needs to be any change um, in the Gujarati ecosystem, for instance, uh, for, more, for it to reach out to more people, for it to become more popular? Uh, yes, I think definitely because what happens is even today, as of now, as we speak, some of the biggest television shows that get launched, they do their PR activities starting from Gujarat, because Gujarat is like a very big audience, you know, sector for people watching entertainment content. And there are lots of films being made in Gujarat, but it's very, it's shocking that the infrastructure and the ecosystem around that industry is still, you know, nascent. I think it's a very nascent industry because it's just literally, <laughs> 10 to 12 years old, so, so to speak. So the radio stations don't the play... New Gujar the new Gujarati industry, huh? The Gujarati I'm films have been around about. since my mother's time. I am not talking about And they've been horrifying. That. I've seen them all. I'm talking about the new one. And the radio stations, for example, in Gujarat, they don't play Gujarati songs. They play Hindi music. So yesterday, there is this one radio channel that we uh, kind of, you know, uh, we've been in talks with saying that you should push out more Gujarati content. They called up saying that finally, the radio station has has committed to playing Gujarati music 24 hours, which, which is a big deal, but I was like, it should have happened earlier. So, um, so to speak. So I think what happens is like, for example, with Kutch Express, of course, because I've worked in, you know, the Hindi industry and have that kind of exposure, uh, we were very clear that we never wanted to make it like a Gujarati film. When you make it like a Gujarati film, you're compromising because you have to make it in a certain budget. Because if you go beyond that budget, then you cannot recover. And if you cannot recover, the investors are not going to put in money in the next project that we make in. So we were very smart about it. We said that we will make it like we were making a Hindi film in terms of, you know, getting the right technicians on board, get, working on the script the way it should be worked on, uh, you know, doing whatever we can without any compromise. But at the same time, we will, you know, kind of, you know, 
walk that thin line between not going overboard with the expenditure. So I think um, because I'm also a producer and we are also kind of figuring out this whole industry because it's changing so much every six months, uh, we are kind of infusing that fresh new blood kind of feel in the industry. And uh, a lot of people told me when we were making Kach Express, why are you making this film in Gujarati? You should be making it in Hindi. It's going to get more audiences. I said, but the, the soul of the film is Gujarati. It should be made in Gujarati. And because of that, people might, you know, resonate with it when it comes on an OTT because it has the soul intact, you know. Uh, and yeah, so I think uh, we are all figuring it out and we are all wanting to make sure that it reaches the relevant people, it reaches everybody, not just uh, Gujaratis, but people all over, so that it can be viewed as a film, sure. so to speak. So one of the things that's happened is, thanks to the pandemic, um, I think the Indian audience has discovered a lot of OTT content from across languages. Um, and that's been brilliant for the entertainment industry. But there are still many challenges ahead. Renuka ji, what do you think? You've worked extensively in Hindi, Marathi, and of course, um, you're a producer and director yourself. Uh, do you think there are challenges for the Marathi industry as well? Um, there are uh, huge challenges for the Marathi industry, though the industry started in Maharashtra by a Maharashtra. I mean, it's been around forever, and yet we've not really cracked the code of competition with Hindi or Hollywood, you know, which is released all over Maharashtra, dubbed uh, Telugu and uh, Tamil and Kannad films. And uh, all these things are uh, constantly in competition with Marathi films. Another very important part of Maharashtra is Maharashtrian theater. Now, um, since we can't compete with the Hindi film industry in terms of budgets because of the viability factor, so in terms of the glamour, the Hindi films will always look a hundred times better, uh, you know, in terms of scale and glamour as compared to uh, the Marathi films. Um, and in terms of content, form, uh, the kind of experimentation that is going on, uh, which is what Ma Maharashtrians thrive on, which is food for thought, basically, much more than the glamour part of it. It's the theatre. I mean, we have a very, very vibrant theatre scene, which uh, people find affordable. Uh, it, you know, the uh, theatre is constantly innovating, uh, even in the commercial space. So there is, a, and of course, OTT. Now you have languages from all over the world kind of, uh, you know, competing. You, you have them on your phone, you have them on your laptop. So uh, I think as an industry, and I think Swapnil will agree with me, is that we've not been able to crack the viability code. Because if we have to dream any further than the lands that we are in, then we have to crack the viability code within our own uh, state first. And then we can, you know, kind of experiment with audiences all over India. So um, that uh, is a challenge. There are one-off films that do exceedingly well, and uh, you know, suddenly people start talking of the golden age of Marathi films. Uh, so there was a Me Shivaji Raje Bhosle Bolto, which uh, you know, kind of even um, broke the records of Hindi films running at that time. Or there was a Sairat, which did exceedingly well. But these are exceptions. How do we make those exceptions a rule? is a question that I think uh, industry has to come together and find a solution for. And I think we need a paradigm shift in the way we exhibit and distribute films. Because there has to be space for experimentation which is not in direct competition with the rates of a commercial Hindi or Telugu or Tamil film. Because otherwise our films are never going to cross that barrier. Because if we are constantly faced with that kind of competition of viability and we want to do anything, then we just do not have the theaters where our films will be released or subsidized over a period of time that, okay, fine audience is not coming the first day, the second day, but by word of mouth, we need to increase the audience and give it time to come because everybody is so busy working. You know, they go back home, they see their phones and they see a lot of content on it from all over the world, like Korean and people are talking about all sorts of films. So I think that theatre going and how do you deal with that? The paradigm shift has to be, there has to be some sort of subsidization uh, in terms of the exhibition distribution paradigm, which I don't think we've cracked as yet. And uh, that is the prime concern. There's another thing that I think now because of as you said, post-pandemic, we've uh, kind of been introduced to a lot of other language films, which for me, as a person growing up, 
uh, in the 80s, um, very few people here might be of that age group perhaps. But uh, it was very important at that time, we had only one channel called Doordarshan. And um, we used to have regional cinema from all over India shown to us every Saturday evening. And we as children were exposed to the best of the makers from all over India. So we always knew that our Indian film industry is a very rich film industry. Then a stage came when the television became very parochial and, uh, you know, regional. And everybody started only watching the, uh, you know, their own language films, their own language television. And suddenly, then it opened up only after the pandemic. So now I think we have to regroup and redesign this whole distribution exhibition network, definitely in the Marathi space, and try to make it uh, uh, pan-world, not just Indian. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a great point. <laughs> Swapnil, I, um, sorry, before you go to Swapnil, may I interrupt? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, this is a, the, the problem of distribution exhibition has been a problem across all languages. I mean, uh, the regional languages suffer much more severely because we have a limited and a smaller uh, bandwidth. But Hindi films, if you try and make them anything different from the accepted norm, you're going to have trouble showing your film to anyone. And that's a problem that I remember hearing about when my mother used to act in movies in the 60s, and I'm still hearing about it, 60 years later. We just didn't get it right. Swapnil, I see you nodding your head to a lot of what uh, Renuka ji was saying. Um, you've also got something up your sleeve, haven't you, um, in terms of uh, OTT and you know, showcasing more content uh, to the audience, a different, so, unique content. So yeah, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, yes. Uh, Primarily being an actor, I always wanted to, you know, I always used to get this feeling that uh, as an actor, most of us, we don't get to choose our scripts. I always say that the script chooses the actor. That's how I, so we, I get to choose from the scripts that are offered to me. So the choice is limited or restricted uh, to that extent. And you have to always feel key, uh, and those choices have a lot of limitations in terms of the reach and the popularity and the commercial viability and so on and so forth. So I always had this thought ki how can we break this, the chicken egg story? How can we break this loop? And I thought that the OTT is a great way forward. So yes, uh, me and a team of like-minded people are coming together with an OTT platform. It's called One OTT. Sure. Um, it's, That's uh, great news. <laughs> yeah. uh, the tagline is Bharat ka apna mobile TV. So we are, we are not we are not even using the term OTT because I feel that OTT is very Netflix and Amazon or Gao Khede Me Rehne Wale Ko OTT Pata Nii Hai. Agar Aap Meri Dadi Ko Bolo OTT Toh Wo Shayad OTT Word Bhi Nii Janti. Toh Hum Keh Rehen Ki Jaisa TV Dekhte Ho Na Aap Toh Aapke Mobile Pe TV Dikhe Ga. So that's how uh, rural or that's how basic or massive we want to take one OTT to. So we are starting with Marathi and again when I say Marathi, I am not saying mainstream Marathi. I am saying Konkani. I'm saying Khandeshi. So we are actually going to the dialects of the particular regional space. So we're going tier two, tier three, tier four in the commercial aspect of the term. Again, it's, it's a dream that we're all seeing. I, the viability and the success is a different story. OTT is a long-term game. But yeah, so that is something that we're starting. We, we will be hard launching in, in the coming quarter. And I'm looking forward to the entire industry's support. Uh, having said that, uh, one OTT is just one aspect of what I do. I'm, primarily an actor uh, by choice and by passion. Uh, and I feel there's, yes, a lot of things that uh, Ratna ji said or Renuka ji said, I, I kind of, uh, I was nodding because I kind of, we all agree because uh, Ratna ji might be acting and Mansi might be acting in Gujarati films and Renuka ji might be uh, acting in Marathi films and I might be acting in Marathi films. But our DNA is cinema. So when we cinema, our passion is one of so if the Gujarati film will go, then maybe we will be so happy as much as the Marathi film will go. Because it should be going to cinema. Cinema has to work. And if the Gujarati cinema is doing something right, then we will want to see it, learn it, and how we can do it here, so that the Marathi cinema will come to its benefit. Or if the Marathi cinema is doing something better, then how can we take that algorithm, try to make it regional to the other regions, and apply it there so that how can we do that in those regions? Like 
हाइपोथेटिकली मैं अभी डिस्कस कर रहा था सौरभ से सौरभ इज यर सौरभ लाइक ब्रदर मैं अभी कह रहा था कि हम uh, जैसे मैं सहाय साहब से भी बिनती करूँगा और ये मैं ओपन फोरम में इसलिए कह रहा हूँ कि अभी मेरे बात ये दिमाग में आई है कि जैसे हम नेशनल अवार्ड्स करते हैं अब वक्त आ गया कि ओ का एक वर्टिकल हो नेशनल अवार्ड्स में क्योंकि ओ टी टी ओरिजिनल कॉन्टेंट बहुत बढ़िया बन रहा है और उसकी सराहना होनी चाहिए uh, जैसे ओ टी टी पे कुछ कंटेंट बन रहा है जिसपे काफ़ जिसपे काफ़ी आक्षेप लिया जाता है एंड अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल रेज आईब्रोज ऑन दैट एंड दैट आल्सो नीड्स सेंसरशिप इज टू हार्श अ वर्ड बट दैट नीड्स अ काइंड ऑफ अ रेगुलेशन टू इट सो आई थिंक इट्स अ मल्टी लेयर्ड प्रॉब्लम बट एट द बेस ऑफ इट इज दैट आई आई वुड नेवर कॉल इट रीजनल सिनेमा आई ऑलवेज मेनटेन दैट इज इंडियन सिनेमा इन द मराठी लैंग्वेज इंडियन सिनेमा इन द गुजराती लैंग्वेज एंड सो ऑन एंड सो फोर्थ सो आई जेन्यूनली फील दैट इंडियन सिनेमा needs to keep reinventing itself we've been doing it for 100 years now and we've hell we've shown that we've stood the test of time and every time people say ke ab cinema mar raha hai ab cinema mar raha hai ab cinema mar raha hai cinema sirf badh raha hai if you see year on year growth in terms of numbers in terms of specifics in terms of analytics in any parameter that you put cinema is growing cinema uh, cinema ghar badh rahe hain cinema halls badh rahe hain uh, multiplexes ki sankhya badh rahi hai and i feel entertainment is a basic need of human life it's like food shelter clothing entertainment so the forms of entertainment kept keep changing but i want to be entertained now how i make cinema to be a compulsion in that form is my job as a technician in this field ki main natak choose karu ya main cinema choose karu to main kya karu ki darshak cinema choose kare ye mera kaam ya ye meri mehnat बट आई जेन्यूनली फील नाटक के लिए थोड़ा सा छोड़ नहीं प्लीज नहीं 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 बिल्कुल बिल्कुल छोड़ दीजिए नाटक नाटक के मरने की भी खबर तब से सुन रहे जब से आई थी बट मुझे मुझे लगता है कि नाटक मर ही रहा है बेचारा मुझे लगता है आप मार ही डालोगे नहीं 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 रत्ना जी मुझे लगता है कि नाटक मुझे हमेशा लगता है कि नाटक नाटक इज लाइक ब्रीदिंग आपको करना नहीं पड़ता है आप जिंदा हो तो इट्स अ पार्ट ऑफ योर लाइफ जैसे आज भी इफ माई मॉम से क्या काय कर रहे सर तो तीन मिनटे चल नाटकाला जाओ गया पैसे तो देने पड़ेंगे ना हाँ तो आपका चॉइस अगर मिलेगा कि सिनेमा या नाटक तो आप सिर्फ सिनेमा चूज करोगे तो हमारा प्रॉब्लम है आई नो आई नो एब्सोल्युटली आई थिंक दैट्स दैट्स द स्ट्रगल दैट वी आर ऑल गोइंग टू हैव नाउ क्योंकि द सेम स्ट्रगल इज बिटवीन सिनेमा एंड ओटीटी सेम स्ट्रगल जहाँ लोग कह रहे हैं कि मैं मैं थिएटर में जाके दो हजार क्यों खर्च करूँ मैं ओ पे देख लूंगा ना So that is a struggle yeah. that is going to that's a struggle so of this, uh, choices this, this is exactly what i was saying in terms of viability correct how correct. do we make all this viable viable, viable. Uh, because the kind of ticket rates that we have today uh, and single screens are uh, like nearly dead in yeah, that sense yeah. so uh, you don't have subsidized film viewing unfortunately now uh, that's what i said in fact the, the point i want to make renuji here is uh, one day i think the world World Cinema Day or something. Yes, I think all yes. the theaters slashed prices to a hundred exactly. rupees. And, how many rupees? and all the shows across all the films across all the languages exactly. were houseful on that day. Exactly. Irrespective of which film is playing or which film is good or which film is bad, if you have one day ticket rates lower, then a lot of people are going to give me galleys later, <laughs> distributors and all that. But <laughs> but I so I think it's a multi-layered problem. Creative aspect of the problem is just one aspect of it. it's a multi layered problem a lot of agencies will need to coexist and sit together and and i think sahay sahab can really help us and mentor us and guide us in the process but i think it's a multi layered problem uh, the crux of the matter is that uh, ott is the future ott is going to play a very very important role in entertaining people but having said that theater or tv or cinema is going nowhere it is only going to be consumed across the bandwidth and audiences across the bandwidth are going to consume all these forms of entertainment the um, the degree of that form might keep changing and varying but uh, these are all essentials of entertainment in india and they are all here to stay i just that was incredible i just have one question that i want to also ask is that you know now that we are also working on different scripts and we are figuring out what next projects to do of course because it's gujarati then it's already like you dealing with the limited audience on top of that this whole thing that you said about how to get people to the theaters so now we even if the script is very good the first question we ask is will this be a theatrical or should this be an ott so 
automatically yeah. you know uh, the brain is now you're figuring out because financially then how does it work because if it's a great script but it's a choti story ye ott pe chal jayegi ye theatrical experience nahi hai so that's another you know uh, aspect that's added to the already different uh, but aspects my perspective of that is the whole idea of making cinema no yeah. is a risk true the whole idea ki chalo film banate hain अपने आप में एक एक्साइटमेंट है कोई भी आज तक जितना मुझे पता है कोई भी मेकर चाहे प्रोड्यूसर हो चाहे एक्टर हो चाहे डायरेक्टर हो आपको लिख के नहीं दे सकता कि पिक्चर चलेगी बिकॉज नो बडी सेट्स आउट टू मेक अ बैड प्रोजेक्ट कोई ये कहता है नहीं ना कि चलो एक मीडिया फिल्म बनाते हैं हर किसी को मोगले आजम बनानी और अपने दिमाग में वो मोगले आजम बना ही रहे हैं सो आई थिंक आर जॉब इज टू जस्ट कीप बींग एट इट एंड वी विल नीड रिस्क टेकर्स विच इज वेर द मनी पीपल एक्चुअली कम इन वी विल नीड द रिस्क टेकर्स विल नीड समबडी टू टेक दैट लीप ऑफ फेथ ऑन समबडीज विजन बिकॉज मैं हमेशा कहता हूँ कि सिनेमा एक लौती ऐसी चीज़ है या नाटक एंटरटेनमेंट एक लौती ऐसी चीज़ है दुनिया में जहाँ हम बिना प्रोडक्ट दिखाए लोगों से पैसे लेते हैं राइट आप फ्रिज खरीदते हो तो आप चार दुकानों में जाते हो आप फ्रिज देखते हो इसका ऊपर का दरवाजा खोल के देखते हो उसका नीचे का दरवाजा खोल के देखते हो ये ऑन करके दिखाओ वो ऑफ करके दिखाओ फिर चार दुकानों में रेट निकालते हो और उसके बाद आप कोई फ्रिज या टीवी चूज करते हो हम सिनेमा में क्या दिखाते हैं एक पोस्टर एक दो मिनट का ट्रेलर और हम आपको कहते हैं दो हजार रुपए दे दो और आप देते हैं दैट इज द पावर ऑफ सिनेमा और आप ये विश्वास रखते हैं कि ये एक पोस्टर या ए, ये दो मिनट का ट्रेलर मुझे अगले तीन घंटे तक खुशी देगा आप जब रत्ना जी के नाटक का एक एड आता है तो क्या आता है एक चार इंच बाय चार इंच का एड आता है क्या प्रॉमिस है आपको कोई प्रॉमिस नहीं है लेकिन आप उनका चेहरा देखते हो आपको ये प्रॉमिस उस चेहरे में मिलता है कि ये हमको खुशी देगा सो आई थिंक वी आर अ वेरी ब्लेस्ड इंडस्ट्री और दूसरी मुझे एक इंडस्ट्री दिखाई है जहां मैं बिना प्रोडक्ट दिखाए लोगों से पैसे ले सकता हूँ he's from the INB ministry and i think a very important person here like a lot of points all of you have made um i think mr sahai will be the right person to you know throw some more light on but uh, mr sahai what i'd like to ask also is you know are there policies that the government has brought in to help the smaller industries grow as big as the hindi film industry for instance thank you first of all uh, Fikki has this peculiar thing of putting a sedate bureaucrat among such talented people, <laughs> uh, but uh, well, it's my privilege and honor to be sitting with such great personalities. Two of them, of course, we have all been entertained by their talent across, I mean, decades now, not years, uh, whether on the silver screen or on the TV, and now also on ODT. So it's really a privilege, ma'am, with both of you and the young, uh, usually talented, uh, Swamitrail and uh, Mansi. Uh, so uh, i think all of us who talk about whether the indian languages in fact now we are also in the government very consciously we talk don't talk about regional language talk about indian language when we talk about uh, for instance we have this journey of india which we discovery made it uh, and it's, it's about trying to showcase india's huge talent across sectors it has gone to 190 countries now and the promo was by amitabh bachchan the first part and so we worked along with the discovery and and that also when then was uh, we got it dubbed in the 12 indian languages and shown on doordarshan so we use we don't now use regional language we use the word indian languages because indian languages that is very important now all of us who talk about it i go back to the master satyajit ray i mean he's most of his movies were in bangla but then there is not a place in the world or any serious filmmaker who would not have learned from satyajit ray's movies uh, so language was never a barrier and will never be a barrier as far as showcasing uh, talent is concerned in this country and also abroad now that we are going abroad uh, having said that a couple of things of course this, this is a industry which is largely private and uh, we see a lot of young talent coming up in on odt but uh, from the government we we have been trying to do a few things like 3 years back our ministers initiative we started this 75 young creative minds at the international film festival of india and we got uh, we invited the applications from across the country 
and there were young, hugely talented young boys and girls, totally amateur, who made those short films. And out of that, about 5,000, 10,000 applications, a panel jury of uh, reputed people, they selected 75 of them. They were brought all the way to uh, Goa, Ifi, and their talent was showcased, and they were awarded. And now we're also collaborating with Amazon uh, with, so that we can get them to make some things which can go on various platforms, including on Amazon. So they, whatever they will make, and it would be in any language. It is nothing to do with Hindi or a particular language, any language, because we had people from Bihar, from Assam, from Tamil Nadu, all over the country. So that is one good thing. So every year we're getting this 75. So in the last three years now, we have 225 such young people, and, uh, and they are now getting this opportunity to showcase their talent. Uh, the second thing is we are now, the NFDC now is propelling it back and trying to get into filmmaking or helping in film production. Again, it is language agnostic, any language, anybody. And we have also invited applications from good script writers to give their scripts. And we are also at a special section even for Northeast that how we can promote because when you see movies from, no, I, been, I, I stayed in Guwahati for three years, I had the opportunity to watch Asmi's movies, and it was a real thrill watching Asmi's movies. So, uh, so a few things we are doing, plus incentivizing films. Madam talked about uh, affordability or the viability. So the government, state governments have, have doing, last state governments have done it, but even the central government is doing that in trying to incentivize by way of giving some cash incentives and some, so that some, some aspect of the print production is taken care. And uh, so those who are, do not have uh, a large amount of funds or not able to uh, uh, get large, large funds, and the government can come in and uh, help it that way. So a few things are happening. Um, that's great, sir. I think that's exciting news for filmmakers, especially who don't have deep pockets, but who are extremely talented and creative. Uh, I'd like to bring in Mr. Padole, um, you know, from the Madhya Pradesh Tourism Board. Um, sir, you know, it's a beautiful state. Um, I'm sure there are a lot of people who are coming there to film uh, for shoots and so on. Are there initiatives that you have taken to help filmmakers who come there or even the local industry itself? Yes. Uh, first of all, Namaskar to everyone here. We would like to thank uh, Fikki for providing us this opportunity and having Madhya Pradesh here as a state partner in this 23rd edition of Fikki Frames. So, <clears throat> seeing is believing. As we are talking about cinema and uh, films, theatres, everything. So, as you have rightly said, Madhya Pradesh is a beautiful state, but you have to come and see. You have to come and check it. We have everything. We have very diversified state, very versatile state, except the coastal line. Madhya Pradesh offers you everything. We are the tiger state of India. First of all, we are the heart of incredible India, having at the center of the country. We are tiger state, having so much of wildlife there. All UNESCO world heritage sites, architecture, history, religion, spiritual places, Jyotirlingas, everything is there for a right script, for a right subject, for anything you want to make a film. And above all, the government is very, very proactive and we provide, provide you all kind of assistance. Single window system is there, tourism department is the nodal agency for providing all kind of permissions, NOCs. And ease of filming, ease of doing business, if you want to see, come to Madhya Pradesh. Most of the filmmakers who have worked in Madhya Pradesh, who have completed their projects in Madhya Pradesh, are very happy. I can say this because they are coming back to us again. So they are repeating their films. Starting from great uh, Prakash Jhaji, who had made four films in a row, Recently, Mr. Vikram Malhotra, three films in a row, and a lot of other things like television serials, web series, Panchayat, Gullak, they have two or three seasons in Madhya Pradesh. So this shows that the government is moving at the right direction. And now, since I was talking to Renuka ji, since now talents of Madhya Pradesh 
they are also coming up, they are helping us, and the government is also helping them by providing them technical support also. Now, the film schools are there, training centers are there, we are providing technical supports, unskilled, semi-skilled, and skilled technicians, the gadgets, equipments, light, camera, everything, and a hassle-free atmosphere where you don't have to worry about anything, no kind of uh, pressure, and you shoot your film well on time as per your schedule. A lot of films are going on, but yes, there is also the other part or other side of the uh, issue, the subsidies, the incentives, the discounts, which are also not a major but integral part of uh, filmmaking and all. So the government from Madhya Pradesh government from our side, we ensure and assure everyone, whosoever comes to Madhya Pradesh, if they are making good films, non-controversial, away from all caste, creed, religion, language, these things, we are happy to assist you, we are happy to give you subsidies up to the tune of two crores. Now, as Madam has said, not many big budget films will come, but yes, small pocket uh, or small budget films are coming to Madhya Pradesh. Not only feature films, but uh, as Ratnaji has said, theaters and other things are also happening there. Our languages films. So we have a special category for now for South Indian movies. If they are coming and shooting in Madhya Pradesh, Gujarati films are being shot in Madhya Pradesh now. So we have something for all kind of uh, these production houses, all kind of language films. We are also going to promote uh, filming in Madhya Pradesh in various platforms, like Fikki is one of them. We are also going to Cannes. But we need people like you to represent Madhya Pradesh, to come with us to all these big, big platforms and tell the story, tell the situation about Madhya Pradesh. Because if I say something about myself or my state, it's little, uh, less, but if you tell about your experiences of filmmaking in Madhya Pradesh, people will believe it, people will come to Madhya Pradesh, and I want to promise on behalf of my government, I want to promise everyone that you will not be disappointed. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Finally, I want to bring in the money people, those who are in the OTT business, the creative space where they're searching for content and giving the audience um, the best of the content that they find, um, Rajat, Agarwal, and Nautic. Um, you know, you, you're doing multiple languages. Uh, Rajat, of course, um, uh, Ultra Jakas, which is Marathi content, and Nautic, you're diversifying into various other languages as well, uh, other than Hindi. How do you see the space uh, as evolving, as changing? Do you think that all languages are just as important as Hindi now? So we are making content uh, in about five languages right now. And the way I look at it, if it has to be broken down into economics, because we have had interesting creative conversations, is there's a demand side and there's a supply side. So when we look at the supply side, which is essentially creatives, production, producing the best content, uh, what I'm observing, and I've been at the trenches, I've been building uh, uh, you know, uh, content in different languages over the last four years now is a very interesting cohort of uh, very young filmmakers, very young storytellers emerging from different parts of India. Because today content is getting more and more inclusive. Today a kid sitting in a you know, tier three town in say Orissa is ex essentially on par with the best of the filmmakers there because he's, you can make a complete film on an iPhone you know, and you, know, you can actually, actually have it uh, released theatrically as well. Uh, since today you have the technology to do that. Uh, so what, the, where, I am kind, where I am seeing a, a huge sea change which is going to happen and you know, everyone needs to brace themselves from it is going to be a lot of young uh, local filmmakers emerging from different parts of India. And today some of the best scripts that we are getting and the best uh, people that you are interacting are not from Bombay, unfortunately, and because we scope all of them, are essentially small town, uh, filmmakers who today have the exposure because they've seen enough content, they've trained themselves on it, uh, you know, using the technology that they have, 
and are you know on and have the certain amount of confidence and are on par with you know, whatever the west the world can offer just two examples that i can really give you or actually three examples is uh, there's a local assamese film came out called local utpath which was complete with martial arts and it had an interesting setup it was a 50 lakh film which made i think about 4 or 5 crores uh just focusing on um, uh, the assamese audience and assamese diaspora and it had a release in places like bangalore which has an interesting uh, you know plethora of assamese techy people who kind of work there and they were actually able to get the most revenue from that market uh there's an odia film that just came out which is outstanding which is about which was made by an it guy uh about a true story about a doctor who was uh, fighting an epidemic um in 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 the most uh, popular in the most uh, far flung district in uh, orissa and uh, that film was again made for a crore and a half and i think the last i heard they'd made about 17 crores uh, from it just out of the odia market uh, so uh, and so so obviously uh, you know, one has to be able to you know look at that um, look at these trends which are emerging and as as uh, you know as as the business guys uh these are extremely heartening to note and then you obviously need to you know look at the demand side of things which is uh, which is essentially where the distribution comes from and i feel that what we are moving towards is a change in technology i mean i've been in the industry for decades so now you're looking at a shift from say what we used to call as a linear technology to non linear but ultimately content remains the same so the trick is to get people to first the viewers to first go sample your content and that's part a and when they actually sample the content you get them to view it so it doesn't matter where they come from i mean whether they go to a cinema they go to a ott platform they watch it on tv as long as you can get enough people to come in and watch the content you will always make money and uh, you know there even on a youtube you will be able to you know make money if there are enough people you know coming and watching it and i think that is what uh, you know filmmakers uh, should be actually focusing on on how do i kind of get my content to become uh, better and better uh, the quality to go and the quality to become a lot more um, on par with the best that you know the world has to offer and it's not about money anymore it's just more about um, great storytelling um, you know great um, experimentation to do with the craft and you know finding that kind of a differentiator and i'd just like to end with this great example of this movie called great indian kitchen um wow. when yeah. when when it started the great indian kitchen oh, yeah. it's a malayali yeah. f- uh, film and um, it was rejected by all the major platforms it was made on a very low budget uh, they just put it on a vod platform yeah. so you know they would get a revenue share out of that and it was a small malayali vod platform based out i mean with most of their audiences out of dubai i mean out of uh, the middle east and the film got such great word of mouth that over a period of time even that ott platform which was offering it on vod made a good amount of money amazon noticed it then amazon bought it at a maybe like multiple times the cost that you know they would have offered i would to be on amazon in the first place and today that movie is getting made in multiple versions i think there's a hindi version also being made so it's all about that it's all about how do you make a great product get people to come in and it's it's going to be a different size fits all i mean it's not going to be a one size fits all strategy that you know you kind of put in when you make a when you decide on making a film you need to look at how exactly am i going to get my target audience because as uh, mansi rightly said it's going to be uh, not all inclusive it's going to be a mass of niches as you call it so there are the different audiences out there for different kinds of products so one needs to as a filmmaker also be able to identify that and once you identify it okay these are the audiences that i want to get on how do i make sure that my film uh, reaches them and how do i kind of get get them to the screen that i want them to be and make sure that enough of those people see it and once you get that mass of niches and a very cliche term called long tail will set in and you're going to be able to actually monetize the content so i think it's a great time and with also on the demand side you have interesting technologies coming up like blockchain and obviously you have ai and lots of things revolutionizing but blockchain is the technology that's going to eventually um, get the filmmakers uh you know the access to the revenues that you know hitherto they would have been 
um, not able to get over a longer period of time. And that's where the industry is effectively going to go about five to six years from now, where, where even that part of the industry is going to get more and more democratized and monetizable, where you're actually going to be able to uh, see the money, a filmmaker is going to know that, okay, these are the amount of people that have actually watched my content today, and this is the amount that I'm getting out of the residuals. So it's all getting there, but I think what the industry needs to do is, A, uh, recognize all the local talent, make it a lot more inclusive, and not just, say, based out of Bombay or Chennai and all the main centers, and then at the same time, be um, more cognizant to the fact that, you know, the product that I'm making it, how do I get my target audience to it? So, yeah. That's my two cents on, you know, where we can go with uh, the entire uh, content bit now. Rajat? Yeah, uh, I'll be happy to pick up from where Mautik left, uh, citing the example of Great Indian Kitchen, which is really great, uh, because that also talks about what VOD has done today. So that has actually given an additional distribution stream, which wasn't, um, you know, there earlier. Earlier it was probably like if it did not work theatrically, your only other branch of monetization of content was satellite. But now what VOD has done is it has given the producers that additional confidence that maybe if my film does not do well theatrically or if it does not get picked up by a satellite channel, I have a VOD option. And that's where I think uh, even what Renuka ji was uh, talking about distribution channels, um, revenue sharing models have again become very helpful for producers. So today even as you know, Ultra Jaka, so we have started an OTT platform of ours in the Marathi space. And today, if we, if we as a platform do not particularly feel confident about a content, but we still feel that that might have an audience, we will pick it up on a revenue share model and we'll try to experiment it, which also gives the producer an opportunity that, you know, okay, I've not made that kind of money, I've not recouped my amounts, but now I might be able to. And that is what I think even Mothik was talking about with Great Indian Kitchen. And um, also like um, with, and I was talking to Swapnil before also that, you know, we do need multiple uh, platforms in one uh, language and every language should have multiple platforms because I think the film industry is not a space of monopolies uh, because no one company has, has helped evolve the industry. Even if we talk about satellite channels, it is not one channel that has given the boost to, tele to the television audience. It is, you know, multiple free-to-air channels and pay TV channels that has helped you reach today. Even with the theater, theater business, it is not, uh, you know, only a PVR or an Inox or there are multiple single screens and other, uh, you know, uh, multiplexes that have <coughs> done it. And it is the same with VOD also. I don't think that only Ultra Jhakas or only, you know, maybe a plan in Marathi will exist on its own. And it, it shouldn't, I believe, because that will also affect the, the buying and the selling power of a, of, a, of a producer. And it will also hinder the exposure of the content. Now, with, now for example, if we take our platform, we are trying to promote Nataks, uh, you know, to, to reach out to the audience through our platforms, along with other Marathi content, because that is one of, uh, you know, the... Uh, it is very important for the Marathi uh, audience also to see. And I think what, uh, you know, even Swapnil is trying to achieve with his platform is trying to capture the tier two, tier three countries with, you know, Konkani other languages. And that is what is going to get the audience rolling. Um, as even Renuka ji cited earlier that uh, Marathi film industry has its own channel challenges because uh, I feel that uh, they are also um, you know, they watch Hindi content too, which probably does not exist with other regional uh, uh, spaces. Like for example, uh, today, what has helped grow the South Indian film industry, which is your Malayalam, Kannad, Tamil, Telugu, is that, uh, you know, the, there is a very big language barrier. And so what happens is they have their own, uh, like, sorry for saying they, but you know, the, the, the South Indian audience, basically, uh, the producers have one South Indian watching audience and then now a Hindi speaking audience, uh, through the form of dub content, which probably does not exist in, in, in Marathi, Gujarati, and other uh, si uh, states wherein Hindi is still widely spoken. And that is where, you know, we come into the picture or we want to come into the picture by, you know, giving the local audience the content that they want to watch. And I feel that is the way forward in the OTT space in general is that every language needs to grow through the digital, the non-linear space, as Mothik said. And uh, I believe that that is going to help in the future. Also, when we talk about subsidies, yes, it would be great to have a little more 
uh, you know, the government has helped a lot, I feel. You know, now every state has come to the picture with subsidies, which wasn't earlier. I think earlier it was Uttar uh, UP, which has started it. And now, I think Madhya Pradesh, like even Delhi has, you know, done a soft announcement away. And, you know, different, different cities and states are doing it. And it would be great to, you know, grow on that a little more, reach out, uh, you know, to extents which other countries are doing, for example, like a UK, uh, wherein the subsidies are growing, you know, international co-productions are increasing. And I think that will again give a very big boost to the producers to go out there, make more content, and reach out to the audience that they have been wanting to since so many years. Right. Thank you so say. much. Um, so I guess there are still challenges, but what the digital space has done is, you know, really uh, pushed Indian content across languages into the forefront and uh, thrown the limelight on it. But one of the things that I feel is India is so rich in terms of its uh, traditions, culture, and its stories, the storytelling. It's very, very powerful. So this is a question that I throw open to all of you. Do you think we na need to start looking more at our own stories and you know, voicing that to the audience rather than just aping whatever's going on in the West? Is, I think that's important. Absolutely. There are so many stories. If I talk about Gujarat, there are incredible narratives that are waiting to come out. And what happens is that because commercially only the male narratives work, for example, with Kash Express, when we did a female narrative, everybody was like, are you crazy? It's not going to make money at the box office, but it did. And that in itself, you know, the audiences are ready for it. We need to break the stereotypes. We need to dig deeper and get into, you know, the regional, I mean, the, the small towns and the city, the small, you know, aspirations. Those are the places that we really need to tap into, absolutely. Yeah, I have felt this for years and years, that it's strange that a country with so much variety of every kind needs to have only one kind of entertainment idea. How strange is that? And we've had the same entertainment idea for 3,000 years. We watch the same stories in every form. The Ramayana Mahabharat Purans. These have been our sources of uh, entertainment across dance, music, theater, across the country, everywhere. Suddenly, today, this is genuinely a new audience. And it's an audience which is wanting more of their own lives reflected in what they see. I think that's the big difference. The audience today doesn't want only um, the uh, fantasy. They know that life is tough. They want to see some reflection of that. So I think that's another big change. And the fact that he quickly qualified when he said South Indian, he quickly clarified. Once upon a time, we called everything south of the Vindhyas Madrasi. Right? You remember that time? So at least today we are becoming aware that India is more than just a small band of people and a small band of ideas. That wonderful diversity of India, which I'm so proud of, and that we have read in our school books forever and ever, that's something we genuinely have managed to preserve over 5,000 years of a civilization. We have kept our differences. Isn't that wonderful? But today we are so busy trying to homogenize. And movies have played a part in that. We have been aping either Hollywood or whichever we want to call. So today, we are finding our own stories and that is the big, big uh, revelation for me and very, very hopeful sign for me. Yes, I think the answer to your question is very, very simple. The answer to your question is Y E S E S. <laughs> it's as simple. I think uh, we need to, uh, and I think it's happening. As we say, it's happening. We are looking into our own culture. We are looking into our storytelling. We are looking into our day-to-day -day lives and our trials and tribulations. And we are digging deeper. And, and the fact that Mothik was saying what he was saying is, uh, what are these regional filmmakers? What are these young boys and girls doing? They're, they're saying stories that they have seen or heard or visualized or experienced in and around them. And they're putting it on celluloid in one form or the other. So which is actually looking within. And uh, as, as a country, I feel we are a land of storytellers. When we are young, what do we do with dad and nani? We have to listen to the stories. We are a country of stories. We are a land of storytellers. So storytelling is never going to go out of form. The mediums will change, the, the form of entertainment will change. But we will always love to hear stories and tell stories. And if we tell our stories to the world, then the world wants to watch us and listen to us. 
Thank you so much. I hope the audience um, had a wonderful session. It was awesome talking to all of you. I think uh, there's a revolution in the Indian entertainment space and things are only going to get better. Thank you all.